Welcome to the Minecraft World Edit Guide Part 5. Last episode we worked on shapes and how you can generate them and before that we tackled setting, copying, pasting and rotating. Now I'm going to assume you know what the previous video showed you but if you aren't sure the playlist is in the description. Pop over there, freshen up on your knowledge and then come right back because in this episode we're going to tackle basic brushes and the next episode we're going to go on to more advanced brushes and the use of masks. Because I'm telling you people this one is a game changer. First important point, don't go through your inventory looking for something that looks like a brush because you're not going to find it unless you're playing 119.4 or 120 or something like that when obviously the archaeology brush is there that's not what we're talking about here this is your brush set in world edit the wooden the stone the iron the gold the diamond and the neverite tools and swords you can set any of them to be your brush and you can set multiple different brushes so you can paint your world really quickly however word of caution i think it's a really bad idea to use the wooden axe as a brush keep it as your wand otherwise it can get confusing once you've set it as a brush it doesn't wand anymore and it's really irritating so keep that completely out so i'd suggest until you are super advanced you're not going to need more than a few brushes to be able to create your minecraft world with world edit so choose one type of tool that is not the axe get the wood and the stone the iron the gold the diamond and the netherite and work with those that gives you six different brushes that's loads i like to use the hose because as someone that's been playing minecraft for so long having anything more than about a stone hoe is a bit daft it's a bit of a novelty to have hoes that are netherite and diamond so i think it's quite fun i'm old school don't judge me now there are three basic brush commands in world edit sphere cylinder and smooth and we're going to start with the sphere command the brush commands start with the same part slash slash br you don't have to write brush but if you wish brush also works like that but br is a good shortcut then space and then you're going to type sphere if you want to have sphere i'll go on to the other two in a minute. Put a space after sphere and then decide what block it is you want to make a sphere out of. I'm going to go for cobblestone because you know why not. Actually no I'm going to change my mind. Cobble deep slate and then you want to put the radius of the sphere that you're going to create. I'm going to go for four. You can go up to six then press enter. That binds that sphere to the tool that you're holding. Then when you click holding that tool it places the center of the sphere at the point at which you clicked. I'll demonstrate that. My cursor's right in the middle of the screen there. Right click and I've got myself a sphere that is nine diameter so one two three four and then the center I put in four in my command remember and then another four so a nine diameter sphere and then if I click there that will be the center of my sphere click there that will be in the center of my sphere you don't have to be on top of it you can come quite a long way away so you can do this from a distance if you're doing some terraforming or something like that and you can just click there you can see I get more spheres and the more you click the more spheres you make and you can make kind of a long wormy thing sort of a worm right and this is one of the ways that you see those big Big organic builds being made on YouTube. People use this sphere command to build the body of like a dragon or a serpent or something like that and then they build off the sides of it. I'll kind of show you that a little bit later in the video. Now let's say I want to do a different size sphere but I want to keep that cobbled deep slate one just in case I need it later. No worries I'm going to hold a different tool. I'm going to hold the stone hoe and I'm going to put a different command on top of that. But with this one I want to put two different blocks into my sphere so I'm going to choose I don't know let's go diamond block and then I'm also going to have perhaps an emerald block as well. So if I use emerald block and diamond block, just separate them with a comma. And I want this one to have a radius of three. And then press enter. I've bound that to my stone hoe. So if I come up and just click on that, it will randomly give me a mixture 50-50 of those two blocks. And I do still have my cobbled deep slate tool here as well. So if I right click there, look, I can come with my double deep slate. Then if I go back to my stone hoe, I can carry on with that. I've got two functional tools at the same time. But what if I wanted a right old mixture? That's no problem. We can use percentages the same way as we did with the set command in that previous video. So here I've got slash slash BR, space sphere, space, and then I put my first block. I've got 15% cobblestone with a comma, 35% dirt with a comma, 25% redstone block, and then 15% lapis, and then 10% air just to give it some gaps. I'm going to then put a space. I'm going to say how big I want my spheres to be. I'm going to go for six this time, and I'm going to press enter. That has now bound that to my iron hoe. Make sure your numbers add up to 100%, otherwise it does get very confused. And then I can use my iron hoe to create this really weird block. I like this one. We've got some air gaps it's not very many but you can see the odd gap coming in with air if you increase the amount of air it actually makes for some really interesting shapes now what if I wanted to change the selection that I've got on my brush so for example I want to keep it a sphere but I want to 
change the thing that I build with it. So my wooden hoe here has still got that four radius cobbled deep slate sphere, but I've decided I don't want it to be four anymore. I want it to be two. That's easy. I can type slash size and then move a space and two. That resizes my brush and it makes for a much smaller sphere. I've changed my mind. I want it to be much bigger. Slash size six. That's gonna now make it a lot bigger. But what if I wanna change the material as well? I go slash material and then I change it to whatever block it is I wanna change that to. Let's say I wanna change it to dirt. So I change it to dirt. It's now gonna give me a six radius dirt sphere. Now you can't change the size and the material at the same time. So you'll have to do it twice and you can't change it from sphere to something else in the same command. If you wanna turn it into a different shape, then you've got to start the command all over again. And let's say you just wanna turn it off or you can do that by doing slash brush unbind and that unbinds it from that brush. And now you can see if I click as much as I want, it gives me no shape coming off at all. But there are two other brush commands that I wanna help you with. The other really useful brush is cylinder and you do slash slash BR or brush and then type CYL or you can type cylinder out if you wish to, space and then whatever block it is you wanna make a cylinder out of. I'm gonna go for stone, then put in the radius again. Let's go for a radius of four and then you go how high you want your cylinder to be. And I'm gonna go for six blocks, press enter. And then again, exactly the same way, wherever I click, that is where my cylinder is gonna be built. But what it does is it builds the bottom circle of the cylinder where you click. So you can see I've got a six high cylinder from where I click. So if I pop that there, it's another six high cylinder, pop that there, it's another six high cylinder, and so on. And just like with a sphere, you can have multiple brushes doing multiple things. On my stone hoe, I'm creating a cylinder that's 45% stone, 15% cobblestone, 20% andesite, 20% stone bricks, that has a radius of three, giving it a diameter of seven, that is five high. If I then right click my cylinder in that, gives me a really nicely textured stone, cobblestone, and a site stone brick mix. And again, just like the sphere, you can change the material using the slash material command, and you can change the size of the radius, not the height, with the slash size command. But these brushes get really powerful when you combine them. I've bound a set of cylinders and spheres in stone across my brushes that are all different sizes and shapes. I'm gonna start off with my hoe that's got the largest cylinder attached to it. So I'm just gonna just create a few little bits there like that. That's fine, I'm happy with that. Just one, maybe one there and one right there. Okay, and let's put one on top as well. I'm then gonna get my diamond hoe and I'm gonna place some smaller cylinders near it. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna go there, maybe one there, maybe one there as well. We'll put one to the side of that. And we'll just build up a little bit of extra shape around the side like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my spheres and I'm gonna plug in a few spheres as well. So if I place a sphere, the center block there, one there, place another sphere with the center block there, and perhaps another one just there, I can then get a slightly smaller sphere I'm gonna place the center blocks of those smaller spheres around there like that. And then I get an even smaller sphere still, a little tiny one, and I click it like that and I give it just a little bit of trim around the outside. Now what I've got there is a fairly interesting shape. Maybe it's a rocky outcrop or maybe it's the beginnings of a mountain or a hillside that you're gonna create. However, you're not entirely sure you're right yet. So now this is where you use an airbrush. On my netherite hoe, I've created a small sphere made of air and all that's gonna do is just gonna carve a little bit in just to change the shape so as I can make it, oh that looks a little bit more interesting here. This is, this is far too jointy round here, I don't like that. Let's bring this around as well. Let's put out a little bit there. And you can create this airbrushing effect just to make it look a little bit more interesting. But to be honest with you, it's still a little bit disjointed. I need to do something more with this. What I need to do is smooth it. I'm gonna bind a smoothing brush to this stone spade. I'm gonna go slash slash, BR and then smooth, just like that. That's all I'm gonna do. That has bound the smoothing tool to this brush. Now what I can do is I can click around here and I can just create this to just smooth it out a little bit, trying to connect the bottom with the top. It's quite a nice way of doing it. Let's bring that bottom up there like that. And then it gets rid of some of these odd blocks that are in the way. And then maybe you wanna put an extra little bit of cylinder in. Maybe you've over smoothed it somewhere. So I can bring this around here. I wanna put another cylinder in there. I'm gonna place my smaller cylinder right there. Oh no, that was my airbrush. I'm gonna place my smaller cylinder right there. So I'm replacing it. Maybe I'm gonna put the airbrush back into that. But now I wanna smooth it a little bit more again. 
and I can smooth that out a lot more easily till you get a nice sloping texture on the hill that you're creating. And by repeatedly using the smooth tool and then popping in the odd extra sphere, cylinder or air sphere, that's given us quite a nice looking shape for our little hill. But there's one more trick that I want to show you that I think is brilliant. I'm using two sphere brushes, one big and one small, and two cylinder brushes, one big and one small, and one smoothing tool. And these have been set to sand. Now sand is great because it falls under gravity. I'm just going to fire a load of sand spheres all the way around here like that. All of those sand blocks are gonna fall. Now, because of the way it falls, you do get some of these bouncing entities, but that's no biggie. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger like that, that's great. And then I'm gonna get some smaller spheres. I'm just gonna detail those up a little bit. So now we've got a relatively already smoothed area because the gravity of those blocks has dropped them into any holes that there might have been around them like that. That works quite well, but it's still not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a cylinder and I'm gonna place a one high cylinder of sand and just smooth around using the cylinder of sand. And it just gives a more gradual edge to that mountain side. So just pop it along there. You don't even have to be particularly artistic. Just slap it in and obviously the sand falls where there is an air block underneath it like that. I'm gonna get a smaller cylinder block and then I'm gonna place some smaller cylinders around there and make that look a little bit more interesting. And the problem I've got now is it's still a little bit jaggedy. So then you get your smoothing tool and you can just just smooth out the edges as much as you like until you've got a hillside that looks really, really nice. This is a much quicker way of doing it over using something like stone. But obviously you've got the problem that you don't want a sand hill. Who wants a sand hill for goodness sake? So we need to change that up a little bit. I've selected my entire region using POS1 and POS2. And then I'm gonna replace that sand with 50% stone, 30% andestite and 20% cobblestone. If I press enter there, that and then get rid of that selection so as you can see it, that has given me a really nicely textured stone andesite cobblestone hillside but it still could use a little bit more work. So now I've done that, I can smooth it up a little bit more using the smooth tool, just around the edges to make it look a little bit more interesting. And once I've done that, I've got one more trick up my sleeve that I wanna share with you. I've selected the area around the bottom of this mountain hill stony thing. You can see that's all selected there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna shift that selection up. So I'm gonna go slash slash shift and I'm gonna go 20 blocks. That's gonna move that selection not quite above the hill. Yes, perfectly above the hill, that's great. And then I'm gonna do slash slash set and I'm gonna do uh, sand again. So I'm slash slash set sand, press enter and that sand will fall over my mountain. I then undo my selection and there we go. So we've got a load of sand covering that mountain. What I can then do is I can get rid of some of this sand if I choose and I can change that sand into grass blocks. I've shaped the lower levels of the sand just to make it a little bit more interesting and I've selected around the entire shape. I'm then gonna go slash slash replace sand with grass block and hit enter with that. That will transform all of that, get rid of the selection and you can see we've actually got a really nice looking hill with some textures on the hillsides where we've not got any dirt. Then build up some trees, copy, paste them, rotate them, flip them, put some bone meal in, some flowers, and you're gonna end up with something that looks gorgeous. And in this way, you can build up a beautiful landscape really quickly to make your world absolutely pop. Although there are ways that you can speed this up even more. And that's one of the things that we're gonna be doing in episode six. As I said at the beginning of the video, episode six is gonna be about advanced brushes and masks. Please don't miss that. The sensible thing to do is to probably subscribe and hit the notification spell just to make sure that you don't miss it. It's just logical. Come on, you're a clever person. And the link to the playlist is also in the description. That's it for this one, but I'll really look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.